What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, March 28th, 2018. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the rogue one, Gary Witta. I'm back. Yeah, I've missed you, Gary. It's, been, it's felt... I've only been gone for two weeks, but it's felt longer. Where'd you go? What did you do? What you I was doing? in LA for a week. You, you were doing some kind of creative Working on business, a top even. secret project. Yeah. And then this past week, I was back. Yeah. But just like that, that one was more just about general life scheduled things. Sure. That got in the sure. way. Usually, I'm able to make it, but yeah. it was just you know, meetings, appointments, things that I couldn't get here for two weeks in a row, which is rare. You you know we love you. You know your family. You're kind of funny that. family. Thank you don't come to any of our stuff though. We are not mad about it. But what do you, you, don't, come you, you don't come to any of the Christmas parties. I invited you to Christmas party. Okay, you did invite me. I invite you to the house. Well, my parties at my house. You don't come. Can I direct you to my T-shirt? What's your T-shirt say for an audio listener? Make plans, cancel plans, stay in and watch TV. Yeah, that's that's even. pretty much my mantra. <laughs> <laughs> what's what, you scared me? I wake up this morning. I'm groggy. I do the sleep out of my eyes. Of course, Jean Vier Saint Ange. Love my life. She's gone for a week and a half. I don't. She's not here right now. No, she went up to Montreal. She's got a job now, so she has to go do it. Do work. you reach over and like it's the, exactly. empty, the empty side of the bed? And there's just like, oh. and he's all crabby. That I'm, it's just me. Yeah. I look at my phone. A bunch of tweets from her from when I'm asleep, and I'm like, that makes sense. And then there's one from you. There's like 4.30 in the morning promoting you're going to be on Kind of Funny Games Daily. I know. See, 24-hour promotion you get from me. I like that, but what's hitting going all, on? Hitting all global time zones. You got the insomnia, you're saying? I mean, I've been having a hard time sleeping last few nights. What's it going on? It's partly, i tell you what it is. I've been, it's, it's, it's actually, it's a symptom of a good thing. Yeah. Which is that I've been going through a very rare, it's very rare for me. I mean, I enjoy my work usually. I'm fairly sure. productive. Sure. I do okay. But very rarely do I stumble upon like a real creator, creative, creative, um, what's called a purple patch. Do you know what a purple patch uh -uh, is? No. Just like a rich seam. Oh, like just a very fertile, you're just cranking it out. A very you're doing fertile it. patch okay. where just for the past week, usually right for a lot of writers will tell you, and certainly I will, that like it's often like pulling teeth, you know, trying to get the ideas to come and get words on the page. You stare at the blank page until your eyes start to bleed. It's sure. tough. Yeah. Um, but just this past week, like it's just been flowing out of me nice. i don't want to sound like i'm bragging but no, this no, is no, so no. rare for me yeah, that yeah. i like maybe i am bragging just for right now i don't know how long it's gonna last <laughs> next week you'll be like, like just, oh, i got nothing just <laughs> i like the ideas are coming i'm feeling good about the writing that i'm doing i turned in two pieces yesterday i got i heard back from the people like oh my god this is so great blah 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 nice. like, I'm, I'm killing it yeah, yeah. i'm reaganing lemon i'm reaganing That's what I like to hear and so i'm having a really great time with that the downside is can't turn it off it's hard for the, your, your brain doesn't just it's like a cruise ship, you know, a cruise ship's going along, doesn't just stop on a dime. Yeah. It takes a long time for it to slow to a stop, even after you kind of hit the brakes or whatever sure. you do on it. Does a cruise ship have brakes? I don't know. Mm -hmm. When you stop it. Yeah, when you turn it, it cut it, the engines, drop the It anchor. can take miles for yeah, the yeah. ship to actually sure, come to a sure. full stop. And the creative Nauts, brain. I think, they, I think they judge it not nautically. Nautically? Yeah. Okay. Well, it can take. Well, a knot isn't a measurement of distance, it's a measurement of speed. It's, I, it changes who you talk to, on what hemisphere. It's a long Well, right time. now you're talking to me. Okay. And. My brain is like a cruise ship, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> it's like a giant <laughs> people on it's it. It's just a giant pleasure Good vessel. Food. Sometimes stomach flu breaks out <laughs> and everyone has a really terrible time <laughs> in my head. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so that's the problem is I, I'm done with work, like usually around six o'clock and I go into my, you know, Play some life, games, see the usual kid. life mode. Yeah, yeah. And, but like the brain is still going, but what about this? What about that? Yeah. Even until like four o'clock in the morning. Okay. And so sometimes, you know, I wake up at like three in the morning. I always have my phone next to me. Oh, I have an idea. He's happy. So I remember it in the morning. I don't trust myself to remember my three o'clock Eureka ideas in the morning. Of course, yeah. But, and that's fine. But just this past couple, this past week, I would say two weeks, I've just like, my brain is just not let me rest. It's not, it's, it's, you know, it's the price, the price we pay. I, for our creative to be a endeavors. creative genius. Have you, have you experienced this? No, I'm, I'm, I'm you're not I'm, creative. I'm a TV. You turn it off. It's just boom. It's done. <laughs> I'm over. Whatever. I don't have to think anymore. I don't care. It's over you're for just, me. You can just switch off like 3 PO. Like, exactly. You don't worry about done. it. And then I'm like, Oh, I'll think about it. I'll write something. I wish, on. I wish I could do that. I well, wish that's I why you're you and I'm me. Wish I had an off switch. Yeah. My final question before we get to the actual yeah, news of kind of funny games. Yeah. Yeah. What time were you at the diner? You, you said you were, you were at like some breakfast spot. Oh, with like I, ended up not, I ended up not doing it. But one of the things I like to do sometimes when I have this thing where I'm like up really early in the morning and I can't go back to sleep, there's a coffee shop on the corner of my, uh, my block. And they open at 5.30. Okay. Because, you know, there's a whole twilight world of oh, yeah. like, you know, early shift bus drivers, construction workers, people that, you know, or maybe coming really home from a late shift at the hospital or whatever. sure. sure. Um, and I go there and the, co the coffee shop's popular by the beach. It's usually very busy, but at the five o'clock in the morning, there's no one there. Mm -hmm. A couple, like, like I said, the bus driver, the construction guy. And I go in there, it's still dark and, um, have a cup of coffee, sit, read, just like have, what I like about it is 
I don't like being up that early, but I like when you go out. I, I like the idea of like when you go out into the when you go out really early in the morning and the streets are empty. The world is quiet. Mm, the rest of the world mm, is still mm. mostly asleep, and you feel like you just have the world to yourself for a it's, little bit. Yeah, you have like, like a secret time. Quiet. Do you yeah. know? Do you, you, you understand this? You like the little, the little pre-dawn. Oh sure, yeah. I'm, I'm a morning person. Oh, you I are? enjoy a good morning. Yeah, you okay. wake up, you get out there. Streets aren't po- as crowded yet. You're but you're not. Your are thing. you like a real early riser though? No, no, no. Okay. No. Sometimes. In the okay. beginning of the week, I'm usually committed to it, and then by the end of the week, I'm snoozing because I'm so tired. But I, I just love that. I love the the quietude of the world in those early hours in the morning before, sure. like you know, like six, seven o'clock, when people actually start to wake up. It's nice. It's like a nice little little island of of of, of peace and solitude. I like yeah, you it. get your quiet, and then you come here. Yeah, and then I come here and get the exact fucking opposite. So. Yeah, sorry, man. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is kind of funny games daily, each and every weekday on a variety of platforms. We run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show, kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Use that Google form to give us your questions, comments, bad PSN names, and everything else under the video game sun. Then you can watch us record it live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. If you're watching live, we have a special job for you. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong another google form and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and listening later on podcast services around the globe including spotify housekeeping for you kind of funny prom tickets are on sale right now june 30th here in san francisco we're throwing a nerdy prom you're invited go to kind of funny.com slash tickets gary widow will be there tim was just telling me about the prom uh back there it sounds like it's gonna be good just i've come. never been to one of these exactly what would i do though if i were to come you come and you hang out and everybody's gonna fall but over would i, you but would I be you. like in the mosh pit with the with the normals or am, I, be. am i gonna be a star you're, oh, you're, you're going to be a star oh, for okay. sure, but there's okay. no VIP area. The whole thing is we're all mingling. This is a big old problem. No, but I mean, you, do you want me to come and just attend or do you want me to do something? Well, I know how much you don't like doing anything. So I, I, don't, like getting, doing, I don't like doing anything, but for you, I don't like doing this, but for you, I will do it. Okay. Well, then I'll think about what so I So you mean. come up with something... Just pitch, well, for pitch, sure, pitch just pitch come. me some ideas. I want you to wear, I want you to wear a tux or suit. No, that's not going to happen. Put your... Uh, wear, wear, I mean, wear, is that required? Is there a dress well, code? Well, we want it to be like a prom, yeah. Can I wear the, one of those t-shirts that just looks like a tux? Maybe. Okay. Because that's as good as it's going to get. Off, offer your wife a prom dress. Like, okay. I, here's the thing. As I'm saying, you've never been to a prom. A lot of no, people haven't either. They have them now in England because right. England increasingly adopts the habits of Americans. Yeah. But when I was a kid, I used to watch like the, you know, the high school, American yeah. high school movies and see the prom and stuff like that and think... On the one hand, how cool would it be if we had that? On the second hand, I thought, well, I kind of dodged a bullet because I would never have got a date for the Here's what I'm school. saying, though. This is, for some reason, fate brought us together. Yeah. Fate gave us this dumb idea of a I'm still trying to figure out what the reason is. I don't either. One day it'll make sense. Yeah. You've been given a chance at your childhood dream. A second, so, a second so chance at glory. What, do what we're all doing, and most of the people I assume who are buying tickets, and lean all in. Get a suit, get her a prom dress, get a corsage, get a limo, go to the Olive Garden beforehand, come here. Ooh. We're throwing it in a mall. We're all going to go eat at the food court, probably. Come hang out and be goons with us. I'll and then cons- party I'll, the night I'll, away. I'll, I'll, I'll consider it. Bring your kid. But again, I refer you to... <sighs> kind of Funny's first <laughs> annual PAX East Chicken Wing Ding, BYOB. It's our PAX panel. Or no, BYOW, sorry, bring your own wing. Uh, it's happening Thursday, April 5th, 7.30 in the Dragonfly Theater. And then, of course, we're brought to you today by MeUndies, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news! <laughs> See, I was complimenting Cool Greg in your absence. That Cool Greg's always just up here. He's right at an eight, and I love it. Kevin, I don't know what I'm going to get from him sometimes. I'm happy you're back, Kevin. Two items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen! Thank you. Now here's what I want you to know. This is like a submarine show. This what is the tip of the mean? iceberg show. What You're listening mean? at home right now watching the show. You're like, oh, two items in the rubber report. This is going to be a short games daily. There's so much information it's in this It's never short when, when, when I'm on here because well, I always go on and on and on. Yeah, except for when you're not listening. <laughs> Number one, let's talk about... Oh, by the way, I think this is the first time I've been back on the show since that happened. <laughs> Because that was the last time I was on. That was such a great moment. That'll go down in the history. Can I just say, I was was genuinely embarrassed. And I'm so... Because it was a real moment. That wasn't faked. Oh, yeah. I was so glad that it played as funny. I I remember thinking... I I went back to that moment. Because I've watched it many times. And I remember thinking, at the time, I'm fucked here. Like, I can't... I, I cannot pretend to know what I'm talking about. All I can do is lean into this and hope that it's funny. And and God, I, that was that was that was it. I, that's how I got out. <laughs> it that was, was awesome. my escape. Room. You're you're great. Nobody can All get right. mad at you. Okay. See you, thieves. 
is uh, killing it. This is via Xbox. Ah, the worldwide sea of thieves. Okay. The world of the worldwide excitement for Sea of Thieves have made it the fastest selling first party new IP of this generation for Microsoft. Having witnessed more than a million players on launch day, our community continues to grow and now has more than two million players. Alongside this, Sea of Thieves is already the best selling Microsoft Studios first party title on Windows 10. This is Microsoft talking? Yeah, this okay. is off the Xbox blog. More than 100,000 players have streamed uh, Sea of Thieves since launch, resulting in more than 10 million hours watched in the last week. We've also been blown away by how the game is, has brought players together. More than half a million new Xbox Live friendships have been forged to date, and over 400,000 players have joined the, an Xbox club to find pirates to share stories with. We know the responses led to some scale challenges and exposed some of the bugs we have addressed and will continue to address. Please know that the team at Rare is working hard to tackle any player impacting issues, and this is our number one priority. Yesterday, we released our first client update to address some of these fixes, in addition to the background improvements we are making to the services. We have been listening to your feedback, so please stay tuned for an upcoming update where we will talk about what we have heard from the community and how Sea of Thieves will evolve based on our vision and player feedback. All right, so it's a hit. Yeah, kind of. It's they, a mixed they, impression they, they, they game. They, well, so I read... So I know they... I, I didn't play it because I, I have a rule generally, especially online games, I don't play them opening days because it's always a shit show. Yeah, exactly. And with this one, you know, again, regular as clockwork. Sea of Thieves struggles with, you know, client yeah, the server servers issues. are crashing. People can't get on, blah, blah, blah. Yes, every single time. Argument is always just like everyone. It's a cool system, but the, it's content light right now. Wait for them to add more. So, and then I so and then I read a couple of, I read like Ars Technica, who I, I like their stuff. And I read a couple, it was like, you know, and they were really lukewarm reviews. Yeah. But then, then there were a bunch of good ones as well. So it's been a little bit mixed. Yeah. But I'm hearing good anecdotal information from my friends who are playing. They're loving it. Uh, you know, Mike at Penny Arcade is, oh, yeah. is having a ball with it. Yeah. Um, IGN put up a video the other day that was just like the water physics porn from the game. Yeah. Like, you know, kind yeah, of the, yeah. the, 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 you know, the kind of the procedural wave generation. It looks gorgeous. Yeah. I didn't realize, realize it looked that good. Yeah. I mean, like the cartoony style is one thing, but like the actual water looks like something from like a Disney movie or something. It looks really like CG, like Moana or something. It looks yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, it looks like I mean, it looks like they've they've got a good foundation to build on here, and that's what it's about. I think I'm glad that it's finding an audience in terms of people were able to jump on board, jump into it, and yeah, the, the, what I hear is it's fun. It's just not that deep right now. They need to add more stuff, and they, they needed this right because we've been talking on the show a lot recently about how like the Microsoft first party sure. exclusives need they need more of them, and right. so maybe they've maybe and that's they've got why one in the bank. It's now. it's it's interesting to see it sell so well, right, and and set these records for them in terms of hey. You know, everybody's been waiting for Xbox to have some exclusives, to have, you know, a real juice behind it. Here it is. What I appreciate is the fact that Rare is listening to the community. I don't know if you caught this. It almost made the Rover report yesterday, but didn't because I knew eventually we'd talk about CFD. Is this the death thing? Yeah, that they okay. were going to put a death tax on you. Right now, you can, or when the game launches, or launched, you could die in the game, come back, and there was no penalty. They announced through uh, some mixed messaging that it was going to cost gold now. If you, like, a minuscule amount of gold, but you have to pay on this death barge you're on until you're put back in the game. And people were up in arms about it, and they came back and said, okay, cool, we're not doing that. We didn't message it well, number one. Some of you had the wrong idea. But in general, we're not doing that. Thank you for the feedback. And okay. For an, uh, games as a service, right? List, that needs to be Listening to there. the community, I like it. Now, have I put you played that, it? Uh, no, we tried to yesterday. And I, made, I chose my character, and I ran into this. We we're going to do a party mode. But then, of course, Andy turned on his Xbox, and there was an update that nobody that he didn't know he needed. And so okay. it was at our internet speeds, it was going to take forever. So we bailed out and played PlayStation 4. Got it. But I put that on there. There's a lot of Sea of Thieves. I think anything that can get you over to the Xbox and not just living inside your PlayStation bubble might sure. be a good thing. Well, I'll tell you what that game is. It's called State of Decay 2, and I can't wait. Right around the corner. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that, yeah. too. You want to play with me? Because it's multiplayer, you know. Yeah, you play I do. I do want to yeah, play with you. That's it. There Let's we go. G&G &G back in team. That's right. Uh, anyways, uh, over at Windows Central, Jez put up an interesting piece called The Compelling Case Against Crossplay. Uh, running through the fact that hackers, since it's crossplay between Xbox and PC, have been able to get in there and screw around. Generally... Xbox players have been immune to hackers due to the closed nature of console gaming. But as console players are now discovering, thanks to crossplay with PC, hackers are beginning to appear on Xbox One. And I'm just pulling paragraphs, obviously. Uh, I won't link to nor advise this particular hack, thanks to those who tipped us. But the pr this program allows a cheating player to exploit Sea of Thieves' UWP client to auto-aim for players' heads, see chests, and other objects through walls, and perform other game-breaking feats of God Mode Hood. 
Naturally, all hacking players will eventually get banned from Xbox Live, losing all of their licenses and potentially access to their Microsoft account in the process. But that isn't much comfort th for those who have had their fun spoiled, particularly when one of the selling points of console play, at least for me, is a pure hacker-free experience. As hard as Microsoft seems to want to push for crossplay between Xbox One and PlayStation, the idea of crossplay between Xbox and PC is mirrored in pretty compelling counter-arguments. PC players can turn and turn a name faster using a mouse. PC players also don't have to pay for Xbox Live, and thus console players are effectively subsidizing the service for PC players who want to jump into Xbox Live. If none of those arguments are compelling enough, the biggest one for me, or um, the biggest one for all for me, is security. Opening up Xbox to forced compulsory, 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 compulsory. I mean, I, I, you ever do that though? You see the word, you know the word. You're having trouble pronouncing it. It's one of those moments. Yeah, where I get it. No, you're you don't. You're making no, fun. No, I'm of I was, I, I'm trying to be nice. I I, I get it. it does happen. <laughs> Compulsory. It does happen. Sometimes your brain just has a little fart there in the middle of a word. Well, it's also that I love coffee so much and that's great for conversating, but I find on the show if I drink coffee while reading, it doesn't work out well because I get parched. Mm. So carry it for a second. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to drink some water. Ah, oh, there we go. Back to Greg Miller speed. Uh, Crossplay potentially subjects Xbox gamers used used to a tailored, polished experience to the floodgates of hackers, the likes of which exploit PC titles with impunity. Not new so much, but I thought an interesting counterbalance to how people are always shouting out how great crossplay is. Well, as you know, I, I, I am a fan of cross-platform play, and as you know, I come from a PC background. You're a huge edit, PC Editor-in-chief of PC Gamer for right. many years, and I love PC games. I still play them, but this is a problem. In, a, in an open system where you know mods and hacks i mean you know, as, as you can see it's a problem in battlegrounds right now it's a yep. problem in all kinds of games all kinds of online games there's always on pc some kind of hacking issue yeah and the sad thing here is through cross-platform play it's affecting even the xbox players who aren't used to, it's like it's like you invite someone over to your house and they bring their dog that's got fleas with them and now there's fleas all over your fucking house yeah that's what's happening here there's fleas all over sea of thieves now mm -hmm. see if see a fleas see your fleas, <laughs> this game is sea of fleas. <laughs> right yeah exactly and so what do you do about this? I mean, I, you just, I, I think you just have zero tolerance. Let me tell you something. Lay it on me. Please if tell me have, something, Gary. If I Whitting. could have any job in entertainment, sure, I would be the host of The Price is Right. If I, my second choice would be uh, in charge of the Banhammer at Microsoft or one of those big companies. Okay. And I would be Frank fucking Castle. My, <laughs> my, family, my family has been killed yeah. by hackers. Sure. And now I'm, and now I'm on a lifelong vendetta. To, to wipe out hackers with extreme prejudice. Ban, 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 ban. Yeah. I would, I zero, zero fucking tolerance. Sure. The world needs more of that. I, I, That's the vigilante I can get behind on the internet. No second chances. Yeah. No warnings. No. No timeouts. Sure. You know you're being a dick. You know you're cheating. Zero tolerance. Yeah. And let me tell you something. You make an example of the first few people, everyone falls in line. Sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like in the Punisher. And world. not just banned from the game. Your Xbox Live, that's it. You're gone. Mm. Your IP address, everything. All your emails. Everything gone. You're never getting back on the platform ever again. Fuck off. Go yeah. fuck up someone no, like else's that. platform. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. You, are, you, are, you, are you vibing me? Are you I mean, I'm terrified this? of you, but yeah. Like See? It, I mean, I wouldn't, what, I wouldn't fuck around. The way that I just, the, what I just did there, that's, that's what I would do in the interview at Microsoft. Sure. What would you, what would you bring to the <laughs> are platform, Are you wearing Gary? a Punisher shirt? I, Please you know, tell me you're wearing a Punisher shirt. Skull, yeah, I yeah. have the skull shirt. Yeah, you're like, the hair <laughs> slicked back. <laughs> And I just, the keyboards. I'd be somewhere there brooding. Yeah, yeah. When you hit them, they get back up. When I hit them, they stay down. Yeah, exactly. I'd be that guy. That's I'd, perfect. Um, That's what yeah, you need I'd over there. Yeah. But I feel like as we continue to do cross-platform, yes. this will continue to be a problem, but hopefully we'll have solutions as we go. I mean, yeah, again, they have, all the, you, they, they have all these systems. You know, Valve has uh, VAC. Uh, uh, Battlegrounds has Battle Eye, but again, it's a constant arms race. It's whack-a-mole. Oh, yeah. Well, you've got a system, we'll beat it. Well, we okay, we've so, we, we've figured out how to stop that. Well, but now we've got another trick, and it's constant, constant, constant. There's always someone out there cheating. I hate, hate, hate cheaters. I loathe them. They are scum. Yeah. And like I said, I would love to be in a position where I could push the button on a daily basis. I would love it. It's just, and that's the thing is like, don't get me wrong, cheating in a game. Totally stupid. Why are you doing this? Why are you these are entertainment? Why are you getting in there just to screw around? And I don't doing mind you doing stupid things. I mind it when you do stupid things at the expense of other people. Exactly. Well, I'm talking about cheating in a multiplayer game, not right, like right, using right. a game genie or whatever. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, single player, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I mean, abuse the AI. All, but it's all like, day okay, long. I can with like PUBG, right? There's we're all boiling down to this one thing. We're gonna there can only be one. Yes. And somebody wants chicken dinner. I understand a little bit, or like the pull the cheat in that. You want to be, you want that reward. See a thieves. You under wait, you, like, wait, wait, wait. You understand that? You want to be number one, and you're uh, you got no but, dick, but and you not can't by do it on cheating. Your own. 
Yeah, no, no, I'm not. But I can understand why if I'm a coward, like these people, you want to ban him, okay. right? If You're I'm, empathizing with the coward mentality. If I'm a slug, if I'm one of these bugs under a rock that everybody should get fucking banned You're on. like Will Graham in Manhunter. You're able to put yourself in the serial exactly. killer's mind exactly. and empathize with their exactly. sick, twisted I can, fantasies. I can understand, well, I really want to get that chicken dinner. You know, whatever. You, you suck and that sucks. Whatever. But like for Sea of Thieves, this cooperative, we're on a ship playing, we're all pirates and it's all cartoony and I just want to get a chest. Come on. Even though have you, I was Major Nelson tweeted today, right? What did he say? He, he that he played last night with uh, Phil Spencer. They had a great time playing Sea of the Thieves. Of okay. course, of course they did. Of course they did. But he, I, I, I like that there's this strategy in this. That he, he mentioned someone in the tweet that had told him about the strategy. I guess because if you have, you know, you collect these chests or silver or whatever it is, right. you got to get it back to your base. And people board your ship, they can steal it. But somebody told him a strategy of hiding it in the crow's nest. That way, if you get boarded and your ship gets taken over, people aren't thinking to look up there. And it happened to him where people broke in onto a ship, took everything else, but they couldn't get it. They didn't. Nobody thought to go up. And I was like, I like that this game now has these little pro strats in it for being a better pirate. And yeah, I mean, that's not from, cheating. That's legitimate. No, no, no. This wasn't about cheating. This was just like, hey, that's a cool thing happening. In, I got I got I got I got to get it. I'm behind on my games. I still got to finish Persona 5. I got to get to Burnout Paradise. Joey is over there waiting for the Persona I 5 just, I cast. just talked to her about it. I'm going to get me about there. it every day. I've been away. Once I'm done, I want to do a Joey. Uh, I want to I want to get with Joey and do a, a, a Persona cast. Yeah, I want to do it and like really go through. Why it. don't you play that at four in the morning? Huh? There you go. There you go. I go. could have actually. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I thought oh, I don't want to do it because I because I um I don't want to wake anyone else up. But uh, then I remember I've got the I've got the PlayStation headphones. Oh, do you have the gold or the the platinum or the whatever? They're wireless. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. yeah. They're, they're, Are they they're, new? They're, they're decent. They're not brand new. I've oh, had them for a while. Probably platinum then. Yeah. They're pretty good. I'm using the gold ones right now. They're actually good headphones. FTC. They sent me the headphones for review. They're actually good headphones. Yeah. No, I like them a lot. I digress. Number two on the Roper Report. Now, this is an interesting one. This is from gamesindustry.biz. Uh, it's basically the IGDA executive director on unions a little bit. So when Jason Schreier came through for GDC. Yeah, I saw he, him when he was on here last week. He came by and his story had just broken about how at GDC, the big movement seems to be trying to figure out how to make game devs unionized. Yes, yes. And he had been at a round table, all these conversations. We talked about it for a long time. And a couple people wrote in, very respectfully, of course, because you're all best friends, saying, hey, it was cool to have Jason there. Could have gone for another perspective on it because Jason's very pro and I'm very like, just like, I don't know much about it. E you know, either way, tell me about it. And Jason did a few, a little bit of like, well, the other side thinks this, but this is why it's a good thing. And yada, yada, yada. But we didn't have like a representative or somebody with a strong opinion the other way. Mm -hmm. uh, cut to gamesindustry.biz where Jen McLean was over there McLean uh, talking about it and stuff she's the executive director of IGDA uh, basically it starts with the fact that unionizing questions weren't on the game the annual GDC game dev survey right and so they were asking if that was a weird thing to which she's like well no we rotate questions we got to keep it to a her exact quote is there was never any kind of nefarious decision to stop asking that specific question, but rather it was part of an effort to make the survey a tolerable length and to rotate in ongoing questions every five years. Now, the article continues. Questions about unionization are expected to return to the group's 2019 developer satisfaction survey. That said, McLean herself is clearly skeptical about the idea of unions. Quote, we tend to think of game developers as being very local, she said. And when you're in the United States, you're not very aware necessarily of the challenges game developers in South Korea face or that game developers in France, Iran, Iran uh, or Australia face. And one of the challenges of unionization is that I believe for it to be effective, it has to be global. If you're only to unionize, for example, in France, where there is the independent union, STJV, you run the risk of having larger companies say, okay, does that mean we invest in workforces in other places? The laws around unions around the globe are so complex. The cultural issues around unions around the globe are... No, that's it. Oh, the, oh, I see. The cultural issues around the unions are the globe are so complex. That adds a really significant level of difficulty to effective unionization. In the in the United States, if you're going to try and unionize a game studio, you need 51 percent of your employees to agree to unionize before management is obliged to talk to you. I think that's a really high barrier, frankly. And there are also some really significant issues from discipline to discipline. It's not a secret that programmers get paid significantly more than artists, and that gets back to supply and demand. There's a much higher supply of, for artists than there are for programmers. There's a much higher demand for programmers than is necessary for artists. That's not to say one set of contr contributions is more valuable than the other, but it's basic economics, economics at work. So when we talk about unions, I think it's really important to look at all those issues and how they impact potential unionization. I don't have much to say again. 
I'm not a game developer. I'm not, and, and I don't work in the business side of it. I'm not sure how much of a cry there is, how much of a need there is. I'm not sure in to be a developer in this shit. Do you hate crunch? Do you love crunch? Is it, is it just part of the job? And that's how it is. I just wanted to get somebody else's perspective out there who has stronger opinions about it. I Gary Witted, do you have opinions about unions in the video games? I'm I'm very pro union. Always have been. I'm a union member. I was going to say a member of the Writers Guild of America. Oh, right. Okay. okay. Um, and uh, I love my union. They're not perfect, but uh, you know they've gone to bat for writers several times, uh, and they uh, hammered out uh, what's known as the MBA, the Minimum Basic Agreement for writers, which means that writers can't be paid peanuts. You know, you have to if you're a signatory to the WGA, you have to pay people a decent wage. There's a schedule of minimums that mm -hmm. says, you know, if I write a screenplay for you, you have to pay me at least this much. Okay. Uh, so there's no slave labor um, or, you know, kind of like below the living wage labor or anything like that. It's decent money. Um, and they and they also fight for um, all kinds of other uh, workers' issues. I have a pension plan that, that, that comes with it, a health plan. Uh, and, um, you know, we, I, I, I've been on strike with the union in the past and we've, you know, fought for... Uh, you know, better compensation for, uh, you know, DVD residuals and sure. and things like that. Like a big part of my income is the residuals that I get from the profit that the movie makes after the fact, like on home video and stuff like that. I only have that because the WGA went and fought for it on my behalf. Um, and I rely on that money. Sure. So I, I'm immensely grateful for the WGA. And I, and I believe that unions, uh, we need them now more than ever in a world in which uh, um, uh, the little guy is getting squished, you know, more and more and more. Like who looks out for the little guy anymore? Nobody. Unions are supposed to do that. Yeah. And unions are increasingly being marginalized by, you know, the guys at the top who don't like unions because it forces them to treat workers with a minimum degree of respect. Um, and I would like to see it happen. I understand the issues are very complicated in games. Uh, I would like to see it happen in games. Do but, you think it will? I don't know, but I would like, I, 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 I'm not educated enough about it to, 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 to speak intelligently on that. Sure. All I can tell you is what I would like to see, sure. which is, an end to abusive practices like, you know, 48 hour, 72 hour crunch. We've all seen the stories over the years about how. Uh, I'm an EA widow. Like, EA widows, yeah, yeah. EA wives, whatever they called it, how um, uh, relationships and marriages suffered terribly because, you know, either either work through the weekend or we'll find someone who will. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and again, there's no union protection. Yeah. Um, I think that's disgraceful. The fact that it's complex. Uh, and there are lots of different um, uh, disciplines and artists and programmers aren't the same thing. Okay, well, fine. I don't belong to like the film workers union. I belong to the writers guild. See, and, that's and there's my a director's guild and a producer's guild. And there are all, ki and there are all kinds of other guilds and unions that's, that, that are specifically set up for your discipline. So why not have a programmer's union? Why not have a game artist's union? Why, have a ga a, 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 why not have a game design? Whatever it is, you would figure out like what, how you would break it down and you would have different unions who I think would all be part of like maybe under a, under one umbrella, but they yeah, would the all address game. the issues yeah, yeah. that are specific to those disciplines. See, and that's, I think, where I was <coughs> before and not so much at, or, 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 let me stick, let me just say it. So when Jason brought up the idea, right, I've heard about unions for a long time in terms of, is there ever going to be a video game developer union when there was the SAG after, after a strike, right? Right, right? That was a big thing. One, some of the voice actors doing it were saying like, listen, it's not even so much about us, it's about showing developers and programmers that they can do this and they can get these things and we want to, if, you know, these big companies are making residuals on these games, we want to make sure that the it's, that's trickling down to the people working on the games and are putting in these hours doing these yes. things. Yes. I think that when that was when that years ago, the first voice actor said that to me, I was like, that's an interesting idea. It won't happen because of what Jen's saying here and the way that it's complicated. There's this developer, programmer, artist, all that jazz. Then, but that's but like going to the moon was no, complicated. No, 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 you still no, did no, it. No, no, stick with me. Give me. Let me finish. I'm sorry. Okay, let me finish. Sure. My point is that was me, Greg Miller, trying to run a company in San Francisco, doing his own thing. I don't have the brain capacity. Where I'm like, oh, you're right. That's really tough. Why would that? And like, you go away from it, right? And then Jason on here talking about it and seeing actually having tread on GDC and t and thinking about it longer of like, oh, well, yeah, it is the fact that there's a SAG, you know, performers guild. You're in the writers guild. There's all these different ways that this could actually happen. It's just that it's complicated, but stopping and saying something's complicated, something's difficult, we shouldn't do it, that's not the answer. You know what's complicated? You know what's difficult? Working brutal uh, hour shifts making these games and getting mm -hmm. paid, you know, just the, the bare minimum they can get away with. And then with. getting laid off. No, it's the lazy excuse in the world to say, let's not do it because it's complicated and it's hard. Yeah. That's why we have smart people in the world. Figure it out. Figure it out because you deserve, people deserve to be treated better than they're treated now. Yeah. That's what unions are all about. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know if it will happen, but I don't think it, I, it's a question of will. It's not like it's, it's so complicated. No one can figure it out. 
if you want if you want to figure something out where there's a will there's a way you will get it done but the, but the people at the top have to be forced to do it because at the end of the day unions mean they have to give more of their money to workers and and help with health insurance and help with pensions and it's it's harder to abuse them all the things that they right now do with impunity that's going to get taken away that's not in their interest it's very hard to get powerful people act to act against their own interest it's inevitable it's going to happen my thing, I don't know. Oh, if so you, so you, you, you feel confident about that? But I think because like what Jason and I were talking about, I think it's going to be a studio by studio thing. I think a studio is mature and mature and mature. You're so going to have someone I, like Infinity Ward, like Naughty Dog, like a big, we have hundreds of people. And it's not even that we're being abused. We just think everything's so great. So we here's keep the it thing. Great. I mean, then it, then it actually becomes a, a thing about market forces, which is great. Set up, set up the, an, a, a union. Yeah. Right. Have the... Um, uh, uh, signing up to it be voluntary on the cut studio. Let's say like Naughty Dog and Insomniac and a couple of other major developers, Bioware, sign up for it. Yeah. That's that's now suddenly a really... Those companies now suddenly became 10 times more attractive to work at because they have those union protections. Sure. I'd much rather go work for them than go work for another guy where I don't have those union protections. So as soon, nobody wants to be the first person out on the dance floor, but as soon as a few people are out, and you realize, oh shit! Like they now now have when somebody, a, a benefit, a hiring. It's what you're talking about with us. the will. There's a way when yes. when somebody is motivated enough to make this actually happen, and then has the trials, the tribulations, and comes back to a GDC two years later, and is like, here's what we did and how what we learned and how you could apply it to where you are. That's when the dominoes fall if it's successful and if it works because it could go the other way, right? But or not that it would it would keep people away, but uh, developer X unionizes, maybe then. IP holders, publishers don't want to work with them because of maybe a cost thing, maybe a timeline thing. Right. Maybe there, there's the thought that well, developer X has can only work X hours of you know a week, whereas developer Y is still on the old crunch model. They're making games faster. It's this balancing act that way. I mean, I'm glad we're having the conversation because this is how it begins. The question is that the Rubicon that is hard to cross is when words turn into action and someone mm. says, "Let's actually do this." But I hope somebody does. We'll see. That was a relatively uh, erudite conversation for you and me, Greg. Yeah. That's what we do here. <laughs> <laughs> Gary. I feel like we're elevating, elevating our game today. Hey, once in a while. I told you I was on a, on a hot streak. I'm on a hot streak too, man. I'm in the Reddit's talking about you're me. You're feeling good as well? Yeah. Oh, maybe yeah, it's the beard. On. Maybe, it, maybe, it, maybe it's like powers. a Riker beard that you've got. Remember how like Riker became cool after he grew the beard? I mean, no, because I didn't watch that. I'm not uh, a huge fucking dork. I was watching professional wrestling and reading comic books. Thank you very much. Right? There's not enough room for everything. You never seen any TNG? Uh, no, no. Really? I, you know what I did see? I think once I forget what I wanted. Maybe I wanted to watch a Superboy rerun, and they were doing the syndication of it, and I saw the one where I they went back in time to the Tribble episode of the original. That Star was a Trek. Deep Space Nine episode. Well. They all run together to me. You know what I mean? It's potato, Man, potato. You've got some. You've got some strange gaps in your in your geek armor. Now, like, no Star Trek at all. Well, here's the thing: like, is, everyone's got a little bit of Trek. Here's what's going to happen, though: is that you you're you've walked into a minefield here. One of Greg Miller's turnoffs in a story is space. You don't like space. I'm not a huge fan of space. So, what about Star Wars? Didn't click for me till maybe Force Awakens, and I enjoyed Force Awakens. Okay, so you. Don't I mean, like, like I and don't get me wrong. I respect it. I've watched them. I'm not like I'm sitting there going like me. It's just like I'm 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 what you like to call an Earth racist. Do you like? Or if it's not Earth, I do don't. Do you like care. Guardians of the Galaxy less I because do. it's I, in space? No, Guardians of the Galaxy succeeds because it was just awesome. Like, and that's the thing is, there's plenty of I like Mass Effect. I'm um, Gary. I'm okay. full of shit. There's just certain you things. Are, I mean, I'm, I'm not seeing any consistency harder, in the argument here. It's harder for a space thing to get me than a modern day superhero Earth. Okay, thing. so with what you're saying is with space, there's an extra hurdle to overcome but it can be overcome if you like other things about a great it. example i always give right of course you know the dc continuity incredible incredible oh, I mean, a, a, absolute top, you'll, top you'll tier remember expert. of course when mongol and cyborg destroyed oh, how Coast could Sitter i forget and coast city and then hal jordan goes crazy kills all the green lanterns then he get, loses then they make one more green lantern ring they give it to kyle rayner and kyle rayner is the green lantern of earth Fucking dynamite stories, right? But when Kyle Rayner and the Green Lantern Corps comes back and they got to keep going into space, I'm like, I'm just not about this world. I don't want to do this anymore. I, uh, when they started making, when they announced the Green Lantern movie don't, years ago, don't bring it up. I got to tell you something. No, not, this is this is just a way into the other story. I didn't know. I don't know the DC comics that well. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't know. I know Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, obviously, of course. Uh, but I didn't know who Green Lantern. I'd heard of him, but I didn't know yeah. what his deal was. Yeah. And so I spoke when they announced the Green Lantern movie. I said, oh, I guess I should educate myself about this. So I spoke to a comic book super nerd friend of mine. Sure. And I said, all right, just tell me, tell me, just give me the dummies guide. What is Green Lantern? Who is he? What's the deal? And he told me, and I listened, 
And a minute later, I said, all right, but now tell me what it really is. Like, you've had your fun. <laughs> tell me what actually Green Lantern is. He went, no, that's actually what it space is. Space cups. There's space he, cups. He, he, yeah, he, he, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a cabal of intergalactic, all-powerful space smurfs, and they have the Green Lanterns, and they basically have magic flubber that can turn into anything. Hard light And one there. of them is like just a fish. And sure. one yeah, of them yeah, is yeah. like there's a squirrel, yeah. a squirrel. Yeah, there's I, a planet. I was, I was going, and that's what I was saying. Like, no, come on, come on, t- t- come on. Like, and see, this is my really problem is. with fucking space. <laughs> In space, anything can happen. They'll be like, oh man, look at this fucking. It's a it's a starfish, but it's made of fucking goo, and it's a sentient being. And they, it's like, come on, guys. So you like you like your earth, grounded. You like your sci-fi to be earthbound. Yeah. Okay. And this is my thing too. You you might a lot of people out there who like to throw rocks at my space argument are like, well, Greg though, you love Superman. And I'm like, yes. He's from space. I love Superman when he identifies as I'm a dude from Earth, but I I'm I'm Kryptonian. When it, like there's an episode of Lois and Clark, the Adventures of Lo- Lois and Clark, the I new rem- Adventures I of Superman. It well, yes. Where if you remember, these fucking Kryptonians show up, and it's okay. Justine Bateman and a, a bunch of other, and they're like, we're new Krypton. The explosion happened, but we've been living on the spaceship of rock. I forget. Okay. And we found you, Kal El. You got to come be the president of New Krypton. Right. And right. he basically looks at Lois and he's like. Peace, Lois. I gotta go. I'm Kryptonian. I'm like, fuck this. This is what the fuck. You're not, you're you're an you're from fucking Kansas, Superman. You're Clark Kent. Clark Kent oh, is well, a real I person. I don't, I don't I don't want to wade into a into a philosophical Superman debate with you because I know that you're a heavyweight when it comes to Superman. But I've I, I like Superman. I've thought about him quite a bit over the years. Sure. Isn't what Superman isn't what makes Superman? And people say all the time, oh, Superman's boring. I don't think he is at all. No. I don't think he has to be. Yeah. I think he has been boring in the way that he's been portrayed. 100%. I don't think he has 100%. to be at all. Yeah. Isn't what Superman makes Superman interesting? The fact that he is at heart and first and foremost always will be a Kryptonian, but he's trying to live among this alien culture and trying to, desperately trying to be one of them and fit in and understand them. But he'll never truly be... I Marlon think- Brando says, even though, even though you, you were like raised them. among humans, yeah. you are not one of them. Yeah. And, it's, and he never will be. Yeah. So, but isn't, so isn't that, I, isn't that But for me, that's the wrong that, interpretation. Isn't that part of it? It's part oh, so of it. Going, so you're going against Marlon Brando now? Yeah. Oh, don't get me wrong. But let's hear... You know, let's, we got to do a different show about this. <laughs> this, is, this is a whole other show. Christopher Reeve... The Donner, I mean, all these movies are great, right? Yes. Superman the movie yes. does more to set back what Superman is than anything else in the I, entire I, I history. I can't even look at you. Right now. I'm going to do the rest of the show. Fucking, like you this. can rewind time. No one ever really hates this guy. Gary, I was going to give you a lead in, but f- go to hell. Well, read the list thing. Read I don't want to do, do it. Now. You have to do Find it. Find someone else to do it. Well, do Find it. Find one of your Superman Kevin. buddies. Find some Superman guy that, that has read your the same list thing. Gary won't do it. He's not playing nice Superman. anymore. Because I cannot, I can barely even sit at the same have you table watched, with you Have right you now. watched the Game Over Greggy show where I pitch my Superman comic I'm writing? No. I want you to do it. I want you to watch it. Yes, I am. I want you to watch it. I'll give you a link. I'm not, I, I mean, why would I want to read it? Then you'll no, understand. Knowing what I know about you, why would I want to hear anything more about Superman Because I don't want Superman some fucking un- completely invulnerable guy who can rewind time coming back what? here. That's the that's the thing. That's the thing. He's but it's an er- not who he is. He's not. He's not biologically or in his or in his deepest soul. Let me ask you this: Who is more Superman's father? Jonathan Kent. Jonathan a thousand Kent percent. Or Jor El. Jonathan Kent. Fuck off. Are you kidding me? Jor El. Fuck he's you. His actual dad. Oh my his god. His actual biological dad, who in, who infused him. And trained yeah, gave him, him his with DNA. everything. He not just his DNA, but the crystals that, that, that instilled with him Kryptonian values. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. I forgot. My dad isn't Greg Miller. It's an Encyclopedia Britannica. I had. Do you know that why, was do you know what why my Superman is. is better than everyone else? Why is that? It's because he came from a superior culture. No. Earth is a primitive it's culture. His, it's his they say it. You're, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You have a very, and I'm not saying it's wrong. You have a very locked in Silver Age perspective of Superman, which don't get me wrong, got us to hear. I'm very much modern. That's just how it is. We should have we should have a different podcast about this. All right, we, we got, should. I want a do lot it. of video game news to cover. You had a hard out. It's already forty minutes of the show, and we're just yelling about Superman. I'm, I, you've 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 hit you've hit a button here, Greg. Gary, I can't nerve. wait. I can't wait to have a comic. Sh- I have a comic show now. You know, you should come do on. You, and do I, that. I don't think you should. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait I to wanna, have you on that show this. and argue with you about Superman. On air or off, I want to have this philosophical debate with you about Superman. Because I, 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 listen, I don't 
in any way impugn your uh, credentials as an expert on Superman. Sure. I think you're better read on Superman than I am. Sure. I think you, you are more of an expert. But I also feel that I have a pretty good grounding in it. I feel very strongly about what Superman means to me. And that's what's great about Superman and comic books in general. Is yes. that we all have what yes. it is to us. But then it gets yes. tricky when somebody makes a movie and you don't like the movie. Yes. But anyways. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, th- th- put a pin in this because we're we doing will, it. I'm exci- we are doing it. Gary, I'm excited for that podcast and that conversation we're going to have. I can't wait. But it's so far away. If I wanted to know what came to Digital Mom and Grop Shops today, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the kind of funny Games Daily show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah! Out today! Stunlock Studios unleashes Ulrich, the unwavering light, battle rights, new paladin champion today, as well as announces the return of Baco's Egg Brawl as part of the Spring Chicken Bundle. If you go out of your way to send me a press release and tell me, I'll read it. I just don't need to understand it. Gran Turismo Sports Patch 1.15 is out today and adds VR time travels. Uh, Wipeout Omega Collection is the free. It has a free PlayStation VR update out today as well. Uh, then, because I put in those, I forgot the real games. Roller Coaster Tycoon Joyride is on PlayStation 4, and Tempest 4000 is on PlayStation 4. Meanwhile, I got new dates for you. Burly Men at Sea releases on the Nintendo Switch April 12th. Island Time VR, a game, for full disclosure, I am the voice actor in, I'm Carl the Crab, releases on PlayStation VR, Oculus, HTC Vive, and Steam VR for $14.99 on April 3rd. Uh, Lego The Incredibles comes in Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC on June 15th, 2018. Oh, Lego The Incredibles. That's interesting. It's, yeah, it's, it's, one of the, it's one of the Lego games where they're having you play through the movies. Since You got, you got The Incredibles yeah, yeah, yeah. 1, Incredibles 2. Uh, futuristic VR shooter Far Home hits Steam early access April 5th, 2018. And then IGN reports. Dragon Quest XI Echoes of an Elusive Age will be released for PlayStation 4 and Steam on September 4th in North America and Europe. However, the planned Nintendo Switch version will not be released this year, and the 3DS version, released in Japan, will not be released in the West at all. I know, I know. Now, Kevin, would you be surprised to hear that Deals of the Day is fat as hell today? No, not at all. It's thick. Let's get into it. First, I got your new PlayStation Plus games for April. You will be getting... If you have a PlayStation Plus account on the first Tuesday of April, Mad Max for PlayStation 4, Game of the, the dec- uh, Millennium, right? Is that what we were, when we were joking around with Colin? Trackmania Turbo on PlayStation 4, In Space We Brawl, PS3, Toy Home, PS3, 99 Vitas, PlayStation Vita, It Lives, and then Qbert Rebooted, PlayStation Vita, Cross By with PS3 and PlayStation 4. Now, Diogo, Gosh writes in and says, what's up, hosts? The PlayStation Plus free games lineup was just announced, so I would like the best friends to remember not to skip the Vita slash PlayStation 4 game 99 Vitas. It was made by a group of podcasters much like yourself, but here in Brazil. So go support best friends in Brazil. Meanwhile, Gary. Xbox announced Xbox Live Games with Gold and all that jazz for April. Uh, From April 1st to the 30th on Xbox One, you can get The Witness. From April 16th to May 15th on the Xbox One, you can get Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Uh, Available April 1st to April 15th on Xbox One and Xbox 360, Cars 2 the video game, and then available April 16th to April 30th, 2018 on Xbox One and Xbox 360, Dead Space 2, the best Dead Space. Mm. Fight me. Meanwhile, there's also an Xbox Spring Sale. There are over 450 deals on popular Xbox digital games and add-ons. If you are an Xbox Live Gold member, then you save an additional 10% off on the games. Plus, you can get live now for three months for the price of one month. This is all happening March 27th sorry, through April 9th. Then, Xbox Game Pass has announced April editions, including Robot Craft Infinity, City Skylands, Skylines, The Hunter, Call of the Wild, Kingdom New Lands, Portal Knights, Cluster Truck, Sacred Citadel, and Late Shift. Then, Gary, PlayStation came out and announced PlayStation VR, starting on March 29th, will be reduced permanently for the price down to $299, starting at $299, depending on the bundle you get. Oh, that's just like the bare bones kit, $299. Yeah, yeah, right? no, I don't think there's a game bundled in, and then Doom and Elder Scrolls, they go up from there. Actually, Doom might be $300. Kind of funny.com slash you're wrong if you want, but this is all on the blog too if you want. So yeah, now permanently in the US, $299.99, over in Canada, $379.99. To which Nathan C wrote in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD, just like you can, and said, What do you guys think is the main reason for the PlayStation VR price drop from $399 to $299? Is it because Sony has found a cheaper way to produce the units, or are they taking a hit in profits in order to get the peripheral out to more of the PlayStation user base? Thanks for all your hard work and have a wonderful Wednesday, your friend Nathan. 
What's your read on PlayStation VR going down 100 bucks permanently? Because they were running a deal for a while where it was down at this price. I'm, I'm still in a bad fucking mood. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to get through the rest of this show, Greg. But I'm, I need I'm, you I'm, for I'm, once to be a professional. I'm, I'm going to be all a right? professional. I'm going to, I'm summoning up all my professionalism to get to get through this. I'm getting hot. I'm turning the fan. <laughs> get riled up in here. I think we need it. We need something. Something's got to cool down here. There you go. Let's cool it down. Just simmer down. Simmer down now. 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 Um. Well, I don't know. Uh, I, I think this in general in VR. I was a big, big VR uh, uh, proponent from the early days. From the, from the very first duct-taped Oculus Rift DK1 sure. that I bought, I was like, oh my God, it's here. Mm -hmm. The future is here. Um, since then, uh, I have turned into a person who has barely put on any of my VR headsets in, in six months or more. Okay. Because it's, it, you know, like the promise I don't think has been fulfilled. The headsets aren't great. Um, you know, you saw that binocular vision, you get tangled up in the cables, you bash into things. There are a very, very small number of like truly killer apps. You're like, oh my God, you got to try this. I still believe it's coming. I think we are about one or two iterations of the hardware away and one or two leaps forward in understanding like how to really make the kind of games and experiences that will make VR truly, truly compelling. Yeah. I would say maybe five more years away. Right now... VR is not that exciting. I, I'm like, uh, the, the, the kind of the bloom has, has, has gone off the, the rose a little bit. Sure. And it may well be that play, you know, PlayStation VR is really the most, until Oculus um, Go comes out, you know, the all-in-one headset. Yeah. This is right now the most, uh, the cheapest entry level. Again, you've still got to plug it into another system. You're still constrained by wires and yeah. cables and, you know, you, you, you move too far and the helmet gets yanked off your head and all kinds of annoying stuff. Um I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't think they usually... No, nobody, nobody drops a price just to be nice or just because they can make it cheaper. Yeah. They're doing this because they, they don't think it's selling as well as it can and they're seeing if they can sell more at a lower price point. Yeah, my take... Well, Kevin, what did you just do? Hit your knee against the thing. Okay, I thought you might have stabbed yourself for a second. Um, I think it's a bunch of that. I think PlayStation, from the jump, was good about, hey, this is Gen 1 hardware. This is You're not going to be getting Uncharted 4 on this thing. We're, we're testing it out. Yeah. We'd like you to come and along for the ride. And it is inferior to the Oculus and the Vive. And but it's been way more successful, right? Yes. Now, granted, part of that's the install base. But I, I do think a big part of that is that PlayStation 4 was a success because they, they came out and said, this is the machine for gamers. Hey, PlayStation hardcore audience, this is the machine for you. It's easy. People are going to port shit to it. It's going to be great. We're going to have all these great games. Yep. I think with VR, they did a great job of, hey, hardcore people who are looking for the future, different experiences. We're making this thing for you. We hope you support it. We're going to support it. We're, you know, it's not going to be that. Yeah. And I think that's why PlayStation VR is, and on top of being cheaper, sold so well, was the fact that, oh, well, I'm a PlayStation guy. I want to get it. And as I've said before, and I know I beat, this is one of my dead horse I beat all the time, is that we were all bullish about it at launch, did a bunch of launch coverage, and then we're really quiet on it. And part of that quietness was, I don't want to break it out to play games, but another part was that people weren't writing in being like, I got bamboozled! I, they took all my money! and I don't. Everyone that, from our audience, it seemed, bought it and was like, yeah, this is what I expected. I play it every so often for this, that, or the other. And then the people who were vocal about it weren't mad. They were like, no, no, I'm playing it all the time. Every week there's something new. And, da, 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 da. and you get to the point that, you know, Andy House is talking about how, okay, well, it did better than I thought, and we set this new record, and we set all these new things. You get to the point that I get excited about it again, right? Where I finally let enough games build up and then went to PSX and I'm like, shit, this is going to be a great year. 2018 is going to be a great year for PlayStation VR. I think it's them. Yes, they want to sell more units, number one. I think it's two. They want to ride the... There is... It, it, the, the flame isn't extinguished. You know what I mean? Like, think of it as a campfire and it's going and it's smoldering and it's not a roaring fire like PlayStation 4 is, but it's going and they don't want to blow it out and, like, at, and start touting how great this thing is and it's amazing and you get all they just want to get in there and get more people who've been on the fence and heard people like me or people on the psvr subreddit who are just fucking in love with this machine talk about it and yeah. i think that that's the thing is that they understand there's something to it let's get it out to as many people i hear as yeah and i think in vr in general again we're still in this very like you said there was a burst of excitement when it first came on the scene and now things have quietened down somewhat and there's a, now there's a lot of vr blowback and dissent is that saying this was this was a fad this is the new 3d because sure. it has not gone like this it kind of yeah. went like this a little bit right and, and i think that's why you saw oculus and vive kind of go, Duh. you know what i mean like that's not what they were expecting whereas i think playstation was like this we know what we're getting i absolutely into. believe that the ready player one level of immersion is coming it's that that is going to happen it's just going to take a while longer and give it 10 15 years and we will look back oh, yeah. on 
like whatever is the most amazing VR experiences available today, that will look like the Atari 2600 to you. And you're like, oh my God, how did we ever think exactly. that was VR? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and I'm, you know, I, I can't wait. Game Day J writes in in the same vi ve vein, vine, vein, uh, and says, hey, Gary, or Greg and Gary, kind of curious. Do you think this year's E3 will make it or break it? Uh, for PlayStation VR. Will this be the make or break year for PlayStation VR? The head headset has sold respectable, but games for the most part still continue to be nothing more than good tech demos outside of a couple examples. I personally remain on the fence when it comes to the tech. I keep hoping that one game comes along and cracks the code and figures out how to move in VR and make it feel natural. Or do you think the slow burn will continue for a couple more proof of concept games will be shown at the con conference? Uh, with the recent uh, $100 price drop, it feels tempting, but I don't want to get burned if Sony drops support for the headset. I don't think they're going to drop support for the headset, but I also don't think you're going to come out and get E3, AAA, this is amazing, here's everything they fixed. I think No, it still it still feels like a side project for them, doesn't it? Yeah, sure. Rather oh, than like the future of definitely PlayStation games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, you know, for me, I, well, one of the problems we have with it is the fact that, oh, movement doesn't feel natural in this, this, that, the other. No, I mean, those are things that on a design conceptual level they still have to figure out. Exactly, and it's because we keep trying to force our preconceived notions of what a VR game should be into what VR games are. Right. And that's why I think Moss is so great because Moss is not really changing the way, like it's not mind blowing, but it's like, oh, I'm inside this storybook and the puzzles require me to get up like this or move my head and look left or look right if I right. want the secrets, but right. I'm still playing it with a traditional controller and I'm still moving the character on the screen in a traditional yeah. way. Yeah. And, and, that's what's, and, and VR has encouraged developers to, and challenged them to find all kinds of new, clever, you know, game design techniques that that we never thought about before. Yeah. It's ba game designers really have gone back to page one because you know the rule book is totally different in VR, and that's fascinating. It's been great to see this new, this birth of this new game design language, and I think we are going to get better. Again, there's two things that need to get better: the tech and the 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 design. Um, uh, skill set and knowledge sure. base. Like we sure. need to get better at not understanding how to make good games in VR that are native. Uh, to VR that aren't just about you know the run and gun shooters because again you can't move we can't yeah. we haven't figured out how to make you move around yet like a drift had a you know, had a clever like well you're in a spacesuit with jets so like you're moving but you're not actually kind of ambulatory yep. yourself yep. that was clever and, though, and as you said Moss does it in a clever way uh, we'll continue to find those and and each generation will each new developer looks at what those guys did and went yep. oh that's clever let's build on that. And it will get better and better. And that's and better. my thing. I mean, if you're on the fence about it and you're waiting for that giant experience, it's not going to happen yet. You're the biggest not thing get for yet. me, though, in terms of the hardware, and that's why I'm kind of interested to see Oculus go, the wires have to go away. Mm. They have to go away. It has to be a mm. self-contained mm -hmm. headset or it has to be talking wirelessly to a box across the room because the wires get entangled up in the wires. That's what kills you every time. I the wires it. have to go when away. When I shift or I sit and I, I oh, you can play the game, you can sit on the couch. Great. I sit on the couch, but then I, the cable yeah, gets under my the ass. Tangle, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no good. All right. It's no good. Your final deal of the day, because yes, there's more IGN reports players who have been a bit lax with their Final Fantasy 14 monthly subscription <coughs> can head back to the world of Eroza for a few days free of charge. Uh, the free login campaign lets players who have bought the game and registered their accounts ha hop back in for four days. The event is open for a limited time only, running through Sunday, May 6th. Now, 52 minutes into the show, it's time for reader mail. But first, it's brought to you by me, Undies. Gary? You want to look good in your underwear and be comfortable, right? You know who else looks good in underwear? Who? Superman. Ah, oh, jeez. Don't sacrifice style or comfort. Check out Me Undies. They're the perfect balance of comfortable fit. Every month they have new and exciting prints that arrive in your door in a fun at your door in a fun bag. Of course, you've heard me all week say it. I use Me Undies exclusively for my underwear. They are fantastic. They are really soft. They are cute prints. Everything they say here is true. And they paid for the ad space. They did not pay for my underwear. I buy my own underwear from them. So you again. don't get like the free, as part of the ad no. deal, you don't get free boxes Tim of stuff? Tim takes it all. Tim takes it all. Tim So you do it. get free boxes, but he blags it all. Apparently. And then he okay. occasionally says something about it. But I'm that one out here, you know, nickel and dime. I'm showing it off every day. You want to touch him, Gary? You want to feel soft there? I really don't. I really don't. don't it's a, it, look, ooh, look at that tiger print, though. Come on, that's oh, pretty cool. I'm looking cool. over here, and it's on the screen. Yeah, I can't you can't get, get away. away. You can't get away from me, Gary. Anywhere you look, you'll see my underwear. I told you I went to Twitch the other day. You were there in the lobby. Yeah, Large oh, yeah. as life. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's no escaping you. We're, it's we're like hugely Black on Twitch. Mirror. Yeah. Black Miller. <laughs> That's what it is. My life is an episode of Black Miller. Well, Everywhere I go. Welcome to the universe. Uh, MeUndies uses lensing micromodal in their underwear. It's a sustainably sourced, naturally soft fiber that starts with beechwood trees and ends with the most amazing fabric you've ever experienced. It's true. Uh, they also have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love your undies, you'll get your money back. So here's the offer. 
It's exclusive just for you for MeUndies. For any first-time purchasers, when you purchase any MeUndies, you get 20% off and free shipping. Uh, like I said, 100% satisfaction guarantee. To get your 20% off the first pair, free shipping, and that satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash GamesDaily. That's MeUndies.com slash GamesDaily. Kyle writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, What's good, Greg and Gary? Gary is quite the accomplished writer, but I wonder what do you all consider to be the best written video games? Also, does the metric of what is quote unquote good writing in a game change when a game has voice actors versus just words on the screen? Gary is a writer and a video game player and a former video game reviewer, PC dork forever. What's the what writing? What game's writing stands out? To Off you? the top of my head, you know the Uncharted games. I think mm. the Uncharted games are the only ones where like you could take the dialogue and the characters and put them straight into a movie and nobody would think this sure. is subpar. Sure. It's very rare that that happens. I like the Bioware stuff. I'm biased, but I like the Telltale stuff. But like when, as you were reading the question, I immediately just went to Uncharted and, and, and that stuff. For me, it was Telltale Season 1, which I know you were, or uh, Walking Dead it, yeah. Season 1, you yeah. worked on, of course. Yeah. You were a story consultant, right? Yeah, and I wrote some of it, yeah. Episode 4, I remember. Mm -hmm. It was the only one I didn't I think was amazing, and you, you took it in stride. You never, you made, you never, Oh, you didn't like that one? Well, I, well, no, I like, what, I gave it like a 7 I, 8 I mean, or something? You don't have to like it just because it's me. Well, no, I know. Well, I didn't even really know you that well then you know what i mean i touched oh, did your you review for ign back yeah in the i did day? all of them yeah oh, okay. but it was a great thing because a lot of people when you review their video and i again i give like a seven eight right and then i did i think say once i played everything i was like oh this made more sense because at the time episode by episode four i was like it seems like we didn't really make any progress in the story but it worked yeah. out obviously yeah. when, I, when you know where you're going it makes yeah. more sense yeah uh a lot of people you review their game they get real mad about it they'll they'll, they'll vent on twitter they'll yell at you they'll be really mean people about it and not a lot actually very few i can think of in my career you did you you took it the best i'd ever seen where some guy was talking it was like it was a bad review i know but it was just not lower scores for the rest than the rest of them all right right and you did the, somebody said something to you about some other opinion i had about a zombie thing and it was like but it was the week of the review like it had already been posted okay and you responded well we all know Greg doesn't have the best taste in zombie stuff. Winky emoji. Uh, and I was yeah, like, I might have it. a little like a, play, a playful jab. Exactly. But I'm not gonna like throw my toys out of the pram. No. You know? No, you're, you're a professional. I? No, look, I know. I've, look, I've seen it all. I, I co-wrote a movie that is 11% on Rotten Tomatoes. I, you know, I've seen it all. Yeah. And you have to be able to take your lumps and you move on to the next one. Sure. Makes you stronger. Mm -hmm. Whatever doesn't kill you. Uh, and then the question is, do you, uh, does the metric of what is good writing in a game change when the game has voice actors? Yeah, because they're different disciplines, right? right writing that is performed uh, is intended to read and feel different than words on a page. Yeah. That's why when, okay, so I'll give you an example. Later when um, Frank Miller's Sin City got turned into a movie, mm -hmm. I loved the old Frank Miller Sin City comics. Sure. I the words on the page were like, like hard-boiled noir poetry. Loved it. Yeah. When Robert Rodriguez made the movie, he brought that dialogue across verbatim. And I don't feel like it worked as well. To hear mm. it performed, to me, felt cheesy in a way that reading it on the page did when not. When it's in your head. So that's, just, that's, yeah, that's yeah. one example. Okay. I like that one. I'll allow it. Good job. Thanks. <sighs> you didn't play Far Cry 5 yet, right? No, I haven't got the time. Is it out now? Yeah. Who has Came the out time? Sea of Thieves, Far Cry 5. Burnout. I've still got to finish Persona. Who has the time? It ain't me. Okay. Well, I mean, maybe I should. Maybe I should start doing the four to six a.m. I was going to say uh, you're waking up. Session. You actually yeah, sound yeah, like yeah. you have a lot of time. Yeah. You could be playing games with or whatever. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not exactly at my best at that time of the day, but yeah. I don't know if I wanted to give you this one then. What is it? What? Ah, uh, why not? Pete says, "Good afternoon, gents." Far Cry 5 features microtransactions in the form of purchasable guns and vehicles on top of the traditional cosmetic only custom options. This was how Assassin's Creed Origins worked as well. Rather than diving into the ethics of it yet again, mm. I was hoping you could put on your prediction cap and talk about what you expect in future online Ubisoft games, in particular the Division 2 and Skull and Bones. Uh, will work the same, or is it be, or is it being a competitive online game a bridge too far for Ubisoft? I don't want to talk about microtransactions anymore. All I know is I'm very excited. I love the division. I'm excited about the division two. Hell yeah! I hope they don't fuck it up with microtransactions. They won't. That's it. Greg's prediction: they don't fuck up the division two with microtransactions. I, I mean, they have if, a if they haven't learned their lesson by now after the battlefront debacle and everything oh, yeah, else yeah, has been going on, someone is not paying attention. I think I think it's true that technically. Far Cry 5 features microtransactions in the way of you can buy silver bars and use them to unlock guns and, and cars and shit. You do have to do certain things to unlock those things, and then I'm buying it all with in-game currency, right. which is actually motivating me to loot more people to then go in to... So there's nothing in the game that you can only buy with real money? Is that true? I believe so. 
Because okay. it's, it's it's got a price. At least when you go to the store option, it's got a price for in I mean, in game money and, re, and that's not. I mean, that alone cheap. is not necessarily you know enough. I mean, you could say, yo, you can buy everything with in-game points, but I mean, they can make the in-game points impossible to accrue. I, you figure my first night playing, which I only put in maybe two hours or whatever, I had a, a submachine gun with the extent or with the scope, extended magazine, a suppressor, and I, I still had more money. Right. Like it's, I I feel like it's a very fair okay. way to unlock and do things, Again, especially. It, Cause like, did you play any of the other Far Cry's? Yeah, I played uh, three, four, three. Primal. You know how you always killed stuff and then you have to loot it and then you can like make a pouch for arrows or whatever, all that shit. Yeah. Now when you're taking your skins, you go to the store and you trade them in for money that you then go through and do it. All so right. there's still a reason to hunt and do all this stuff. So all far, right. I'm enjoying it, but maybe okay. I'm missing something. Let me know. Do Not you like in the your story. <sighs> I, heard, I heard a couple, read a couple of reviews that the game is good, but the story was was not what they hoped. It's it's what I expected. When they debuted it, and everybody's like, whoa, this is super serious. I'm like, yeah, but it's Far Cry. Like, Far Cry's never been, we're going to tackle this tough issue. Do you, I mean, do, but you, do you feel like, even through, like, its satirical lens, do you feel like it, it's tackling the issue in a way that is worthwhile? I mean, what's the issue? Cults? Again, like, religious, dangerous, religious zealotry. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, like coming in, off in, of... In the American did you, heartland. Did you watch Wild Wild Country? What's on that? On Netflix? Awesome, no. awesome. No, what Seven that? part uh, documentary series on this cult that took over a town in Oregon. And okay. like totally started fucking things up and how crazy it gets and there's murder and there's all or attempted murder and all these different entries. It's fucking crazy. But like when they debuted Far Cry, I was like, seems a bit far fetched that they could take over a town in Montana. And then I watched this the weekend yeah, before yeah, Far Cry. Yeah. I was like, holy crap, this is really gonna yeah. happen. Um, this the main story of the you know the father and his disciples and all that stuff. I like a lot. The supporting cast, I'm not really vibing with. I don't really care what they're saying. Okay. When I talk to them, but. Overall, I want to see. I'm very interested in the bosses and where they're going to go. All right, I'm, I'm going to check it out. Okay, good. Uh, oh, and then here's a quick one from JBR, frequent co contributor to kindoffunny.com/slash/kfgd. Hey, Greg and Gary. Greg, what is your relationship with the FCC? Last year for your Horizon Zero Dawn review, you stated that Sony sent you a copy of the game. I imagine you'll have to do the same with your God of War review when it approaches. I'd love to understand what exactly they do for you and vice versa. Greetings from Florida, JBR. What's the FCC got to do with Sony sending you review It's copies? actually the FTC. Oh. FTC ha is... So what, they, what do I have to do with the FTC? Nothing. Sony and the FTC have to deal with each other. Why is that? Because as we deal with all this continuing online influencer, da -da, pay for play, but uh, everybody's getting super worried, FTC included, about you giving something to someone online and them talking about So even like, providing you with a free copy of the game to review can be perceived as a bribe? Yes. That's madness. It's very, it's, it, I find it incredibly crazy, but the problem is we went from being at IGN in the press bucket where you don't have to disclose that you got the game. Most, a lot of people do and would tell you to your face. We went to the influencer bucket where they're thinking of us more as, hey, I'm YouTuber X and I'm playing, whoa, I love God I mean, of War. God of War is great. Here's, here's one. I mean, obviously a, a lot of times in order to, I mean, it's different now with on, online because the lead times are down to almost zero as opposed to, you know, weeks at a time when I was on print magazines. Yeah. But one thing I think you could do if you were, setting out an editorial outlet and you wanted to be able to, 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 to say one of our benefits is we have complete editorial integrity yeah is say we don't even accept free we just buy the games what yeah. 50 bucks well, people, a time uh, afford Polygon that Polygon does it's that it's like Consumer Reports doesn't take they buy every, everything they test they buy someone it. right now does that too if we're in our in our video game landscape yeah they so they say we don't even accept the free games sure again 50 dollars a time that's in, it's, it comes out of petty cash well it depends how much just, you want to how big your company is well it depends how many you games you're going to review and it would add up over time but you get to say like we don't take anything for free not even the games yeah and some people might be attracted to that sure I, I hear you in I think, but it's the opposite, right? Where Jason, when he was on, he was talking about how like uh, Bethesda hasn't sent them anything, even emails in years, right? I don't think that, I think that's more uncommon than it is for, it's way more common that everybody gets the game for free. But it's I, just I, so, I, it's, I, the I, FTC at some point put the fear of God into PlayStation, look, so now they come to me as an influencer. And they say, want you to review the game, so they make it easy for you by providing you with a copy yeah. or a code. You know, they don't know if you're going to like it or not. You know, it's when the game shows up with, a crate of champagne that maybe it becomes problematic sure. as it often did back in the day. I uh -huh. mean, there was all kinds of freebies and tchotchkes floating around. I think there still are. I mean, there's still all kinds of swag. I got a Far around. Cry bat over there if you want to play. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Go. See how to um, but um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a little too far to say that like just giving you giving you the copy of the game that you need to do your job. I think that's well within the boundaries of I agree. normalcy. But it's like that thing of it's also, I, I am in an interesting place where obviously the whole ethics of kind of funny is you know everything that happens. So like when you're, he's talking about Horizon, I just did it for 
the God of War preview of it and then I, some other PlayStation game recently that came out. Doesn't matter. I put the hashtag on there of Sony partner. So I have one thing that's like, hey, I like the game or here's my I, blah, blah, blah. And like if it's just me promoting a video of like, hey, we talked about God of War. I don't have to do it. But if it's me giving an opinion based tweet on some. Oh, the headset. Sony sent me the gold headset. And I was like, oh, hey, blah, blah. I put so, <laughs> one tweet. Hashtag Sony partner. And then I did like 14 follow up tweets that made it into a joke, but also explained it because they want us to either use hashtag ad hashtag sponsored or yeah. hashtag Sony partner. Right. I'll never use ad because we do do that. When you see me put out a tweet that's a hashtag ad, it's part of an ad buy. Right. And when I put out hashtag sponsored, that means it's the same thing as ad. It's part of an ad buy. I signed a contract that was, we're going to make something. We're going to say something. We're going to do something. And I am part of that in the contract is me tweeting. I don't know it. how codified it is here, but in England, that's the law. If yeah, you, no, if you it's are paid to endorse here. a product on Twitter, you have to disclose you have to disclose it in the tweet. And that's why you see Instagram cracking down and doing stuff like that too. Sony Partner is the only other option we have. I I've been asking them if we can use free product because I think that explains it better. Because right. even Sony Partner, I feel like Well, that kind of makes it sound like you're in cahoots with them in some I way. I think so yeah, Sony Partner makes me sound like I'm yeah. partnering with them. I'm partnering with them to talk about God of War when I could not like God of War. I could not like the headset. I could not like Horizon. Right, right. But again, I'm not talking to thousands or millions and millions of people i'm talking to the kind of funny best friends so i'll keep explaining it and keep doing it every time until it's just common practice it's and, all you know, about ethics and games journalism Greg. it is it is time to squad up this is where one of you writes into kind of funny.com slash kfgd give me your name username platform of choice and why you need help in a video game i read it here the best friends come and find you everybody plays games together and has a good time today is a very different squad up you're, you're, doing, you're doing this one, right? Yeah. Okay. A lot of you probably ignore Squad Up, no, no, with all due respect. Yeah, don't ignore this one. You're not going to play. This is a simple one we all need to do. Everyone needs to do this. I repeat, everyone needs to do this. My dog, Nick96, of course, from Massachusetts. He points it out every time. I digress. My dog, Nick96, from Massachusetts, says, Hello, kind of funny. I'm riding in with a squad up, but it's more of a send some love. To be blunt, my father has cancer and has limited to no mobility on his left side. He is 62 and enjoys playing video games. He doesn't have PlayStation Plus, but I thought it would be nice if some best friends would send him some nice messages. He loves MLB The Show and sports in general, and I just got him a copy of The Show 18. He plays it year round, so thanks to Sony San Diego Studios for making one of his favorite games. Uh, I've seen him playing a lot of Monopoly lately as well. <laughs> awesome. Uh, this is his first week starting radiation and and chemo treatments. I just hope some encouragement would cheer him up. His PSN name is Wrangler 006. So that's W R A N G L E R 006. His avatar is a volleyball. Thank you, my dog Nick 96. If you only respond to one squad up all year, make it that one, I say. Everybody drop Wrangler 006 a nice message and say, We love you very much. And your son, we get it, is from Massachusetts. There's not another my dog Nick 96 writing in, but you know, I digress. Gary, now it's time for You're Wrong. If folks are watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, we ask them to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. It now comes in a spreadsheet. How do we do this week? Uh, oh, so, it's, it's, so you don't have to scroll through the uh, web page anymore? Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Much better. All right, so here we go. Let's what do we got? We're getting to the 28s, and I'm sure some people are going to be... Yep, nope. A lot of people are talking... Okay, jeez. You, ugh. I tell you what. I don't feel like we put our foot in it. Too bad. Today. Kebabs writes in and says, most ships contain no form of braking or other similar system and stop by turning off the engine and slowing down due to the resistance in the water. Large cruise ships, when pushed, can stop in about four minutes. All right. So that's your brain. But, it's, but I believe it takes, a, they travel about a mile or more in that four minutes because... Oh, yeah, they're going to keep moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's King James now says Gary Witta is wrong about his opinion on the value of stepfathers especially as it pertains to Superman and I have to agree you can't, you can't be wrong about an, an, an saying, opinion I'm, well you are right there you know what I mean uh, Zan Fair writes in and says Dragon Ball Z's fighters and by the way I wasn't impugning the value of stepfathers oh no you did Kevin no, cut his no, mic no, cut no, his no, mic no, Kevin no, no. this no. is a very specific case we're talking about with Superman <laughs> Uh huh. Dragon Ball Z's fighters, or whatever it is, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, whatever. First set of DLC characters, Broly and Bardock, are out today. Not sure if you usually do DLC in the list, but I thought I'd throw it in. Go ahead. Why not? Mm hmm. Uh, some info. Oh, sorry. This is Charles J. Some info. In Denmark, there's actually a union which has a branch covering game developers under tech design creativity. Mm -hmm. This includes designers, producers, directors, and et cetera within the game industry. Additionally, we have a union for specifically programmers, software engineers. So while it gets more complicated with companies that work across multiple countries, it should be possible to find a solution that covers some basic areas. 
Um, Sammy Toto says during question during your me undies read you say that if you aren't satisfied with the underwear you can get a full you the underwear you can get a full refund. I was curious, do we have to send the undies back? I think I think you keep them. I don't think they want them back. They're not going to try to resell them. Uh, let's keep going there. A lot of people want us to vet these beforehand. There's just not enough time. You, you know see what I mean? What? Vet beforehand. Mm. Oh, like curate Ignacio them? Rojas is a, trying to be a son of a bitch. He says on previous Far Cry games, you could also loot people and animals and sell everything you got. It's not something new to Far Cry. Sure, but before you take your wolf skins or your shark pelts and make a wallet. I'm saying now you just sell everything, Ignacio. So break your dick off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, somebody tries to say I'm wrong about Superman. I'm not going to read that one at all. Of course you're not. Because uh, you don't want to hear these. No, of course not. You know how Different it is. opinions. Yeah, I'm not going to live in your little bubble know. there. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to live in your little mental candor. Yeah. Little bubble, <laughs> Thank you. Little, yeah. little bubble city in your mind. Uh, impervious to outside influence. Uh, Mikhail says, it's fair, that, it's fair that the FTC regulation seems ridiculous to you because you're coming from a good place, but in lower echelons of YouTubers slash in influencers, misconduct is effing rampant. I know. And again, that's why I like, oh, we know. I'm fine with it. I'm just saying, I think I should be in the press thing and I should get everything. I think I should know Spider-Man's release date right now. And then, oh, Petey. Zero zero says extra content for the Sea of Thieves best selling Microsoft IP of the generation, this generation. That doesn't include people playing through Game Pass. Aaron Greenberg says it's the fastest selling IP, does not oh, include right. Game you get Pass it numbers. Ga- you get it through Game Pass, so the yeah. numbers could actually even be bigger. Yeah, so they are. B- player numbers are bigger. Very yeah. interesting. Mm-hmm. And that's apparently all we screwed up. Yeah, we did good. Not too shabby. I mean, again, you are obviously monumentally wrong about don't, the whole Superman issue, me. but that's for another day. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my final kind of funny games daily of the week tomorrow. Mm. Andrea and Jared Petty will do the show for you, followed by Friday when Jared and Gary Witta take it all on for you. We'll be, of course, down in San Diego doing Let's Play Spring Break. Stay tuned for all that jazz that's happening. I don't even know. We're we're playing games, I think. I'm bringing Portillo. Drinking a lot, I bet, too. That's probably a big part of it. Yeah, Kevin's excited. Uh, Gary, thank you for your time. Always a pleasure. Please read some Superman comics, change your mind, get on the right side of history about this. And until next time, no, it's been our pleasure to serve you.